Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this week video, we are going to learn about reaction equilibrium in gas mixture. I've already prepared 9 different questions to be discussed with all of you and let's get started with the first one. Question number 1. A gas cylinder contains 4 times 10 to the power of 4 cm cube of hydrogen at a pressure of 2.5 times 10 to the power of 7 pascal and temperature of 290 Kelvin. The cylinder is to be used to fill balloon. Each balloon when filled contains 7.24 times 10 to the power of 3 cm cube of hydrogen at pressure of 1.85 times 10 to the power of 5 pascal and temperature of 290 Kelvin. Determine the number of cylinder needed to fill 1400 balloon. Before we can start doing the calculation, we need to know what are the information given to us. We were given the volume, the pressure, and also the temperature. It means that we can employ the ideal gas law. But before using the ideal gas law, we need to ensure that all the units are correct. For instance, your volume should be in litre and your pressure should be in ATM. So let's convert this value beforehand. We are going to start with the conversion of all the volumes. So the first volume given to you in the question is 4 times 10 to the power of 4 cm cube. So this you need to divide by 1000 Therefore, you will get 40 liter. Another value that is given to you is 7.24 times 10 to the power of 3 cm cube. So this one you need to convert to liter also. So 7.24 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by 1000, you should get 7.24 liter. So this value is for the whole cylinder. And this value is for one balloon. Next, we shall convert the pressure from Pascal to ATM. So the pressure is 2.5 times 10 to the power of 7 Pascal. You want to convert this into ATM, so you just have to divide this value with 101. 3, 2, 5. So you will get 2.4073 times 10 to the power of 2 ATM. So we're going to do the same drill for the other one. So 1.85 times 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. You want to convert this into ATM. So 1.85 times 10 to the power of 5 divided by 101. 3, 2, 5, you shall get 1.8258 ATM. Alright, so all of this value have been converted into the correct unit. So you can plug in this value inside the ideal gas law formula. From the previous calculation, these are the values that we gain. So we are going to use the ideal gas law to plug in this value. PV equivalent to NRT. So the pressure is 2.4673 times 10 to the power of 2 and the volume is 40 liter and it's the thing that you want to calculate R is 0 0.0821 which is the constant value and your temperature is 290. So from here you shall get your N is equivalent to 9.8692 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by 2.3809 times 10 to the power of 1. Therefore, you get your N is equivalent to 4.1452 times 10 to the power of 2 more of hydrogen. 
So we're going to do the same thing for this part. So PV equivalent to NRT. Your P is 1.8258 and your V is 7.24. M is the one that you want to calculate and R is the constant value 0.0821 and your uh, temperature is the same which is 290. So from here you get your N equivalent to 1.3219 times 10 to the power of 1 divided by 2.3809 times 10 to the power of 1 therefore your N is equivalent to 5.5521 times 10 to the power of negative 1 mole of hydrogen. So the difference between this one and this one is that this one is for one cylinder and this one is actually for one balloon. From the previous calculation, we get these values. Therefore, from here, we can predict how many cylinders of gas is needed to fill in 1400 balloon. So basically, in one balloon, you need 5.5521 times 10 to the power of negative 1 mole of gas. So this one is for one balloon. So in one cylinder, you have more than this. You have 4.1452 times 10 to the power of 2 mole. So how many balloons can be filled? So 1 divided by 5.5521 times 10 to the power of negative 1 times this value 4.1452 times 10 to the power of 2. So from here, you shall get 746 balloons. From here, we know that for one cylinder, so 746 balloon can be filled by using just one cylinder. But you were asked to calculate for 1400 balloon. Therefore, 1 divided by 746 times 1400 so you will get 1.8766 cylinder whereby this one is equivalent to 2 cylinder if you use just one cylinder it is not enough because it can only fill 746 cylinder but you don't need 3 because you only need 1.8766 cylinder so is equivalent to two cylinder. So this is the final answer for the first question. Let's move on to question number two. How many grams of water shall be produced by the combustion of 58.2 litre of methane at STP? Assume that there are excess oxygen throughout the reaction, given that the atomic mass for oxygen, carbon and hydrogen are as given in the question respectively. Before we can proceed with the calculation, what we are going to do is look at the information given to us. So the reaction happens are the combustion reaction, you were given the volume and the reaction occurs at SDP. So this information are very important so that you can move through this question. So the first step that we need to do is we need to write a combustion reaction. Uh, so we are going to use methane. So methane is CH4. In the combustion reaction, you do need oxygen and then it shall produce water and also carbon dioxide. So what else do you need to do is obviously you need to make sure that this equation is balanced. So how many oxygens are there? Uh, at the moment, we only have three oxygen 
in the product and only two oxygen in the reactant. So what we are going to do here, we are going to times two around here. So you will get four oxygen. So when we times two around here, so two plus two equivalent to four. So you balance out your oxygen. And next we are looking at the hydrogen. So two times two equivalent to four. And indeed here at the reactant, you have four hydrogen. So this is a balanced equation already. Alright, the next crucial information given to you in the question is this reaction occurs at STP. So the standard temperature is 273 and the standard pressure is 1 atm. You're also given the volume of methane. Therefore, you can use PV equivalent to NRT to find what is the number of mole of methane have in this reaction. So your pressure is 1 atm, your volume is 58.2 liter and your N is the thing you want to calculate. R is a constant value 0 0.0821 and your temperature is 273. So from there you get your N is equivalent to 58.2 divided by 22.4133 Hence, your N is equivalent to 2.5967 mole of methane. Alright, if we read closely at the question, you will ask how many grams of water? So, how many grams of water shall be produced? So, just now, we calculated the number of mole of methane. So, what we are going to do is that we are going to do the ratio. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write again the chemical equation. So, you have CH4, which is your methane. It will react with 2 moles of oxygen to produce 2 moles of water and also carbon dioxide. So it means that for every mole of methane, it shall produce two moles of water. Okay, so from our calculation just now, the number of mole of methane that we have by using 58.2 liter of methane at STP is equivalent to 2.5967 mole. Therefore, you need 2 times 2, so 2 times 2.5967 mole. So you should get 5.1934 mole of water to be produced in this reaction. But the question wants you to calculate the mass of water, not the number of mole. So the number of mole is equivalent to mass over relative molar mass. So the mass is what you want to calculate. The number of mole is 5.1934. And your relative molar mass for high uh, for water, H2O. So you need to 2 times your hydrogen. Hydrogen is the last one. 1.008 plus your oxygen. The first one is 15. 0.999 so you should get the number of mole is equivalent to the mass over 1.8015 times 10 to the power of 1 so the number of mole here is this value so your mass should be equivalent to 1.8015 times 10 to the power of 1 times the number of mole, 5.1934. So you will get your mass equivalent to 
zero one gram. So zero one gram of white of water. So this is the final answer for the second question. Let's move on to question number three. A 2.5 liter of sample at 273 Kelvin contains 0.006 mole of hydrogen, 0.0024 mole of oxygen, and 0.0002 mole of methane. What is the partial pressure of oxygen? In order for you to answer the partial pressure of oxygen, the first thing that we need to calculate is the mole fraction. So the mole fraction for oxygen is equivalent to the mole of oxygen, which is this one, divided by the total number of moles. So the mole uh, of oxygen is 0 0.0024 divided by the total number of mole which is 0 0.006 plus 0 0.0024 plus 0 0.0002. So you should get the mole fraction for oxygen is equivalent to 0 0.0024 divided by 8.6 times. 10 to the power of negative 3 and the answer should be 2.7907 times 10 to the power of negative 1. Alright, theoretically, when you want to find partial pressure, It's very simple because now you already have your mole fraction. So you should just times the total pressure, right? But the question is, what is your total pressure? It is not given in the question. So how are you going to find your total pressure? We need to use the ideal gas law. So PV equivalent to N. RT. The question is, what is your N? So, the total number of mole is actually given to you in the question. So, you already calculated this one. So, your N should be equivalent to this. So, what is your V given to you in the question? 2.5 liter. Therefore, we can get what is the total pressure for this mixture of gases. So you have P, the one that you want to calculate. The V is 2.5. Your N is equivalent to 8.6 times 10 to the power of negative 3. And your R is a constant value, 0 0.0821. And your temperature is given in the question as well, 273. So from here, you can get your P is equivalent to 1.9275 times 10 to the power of negative 1 divided by 2.5. So your P is equivalent to 7.7101 times 10 to the power of negative 2. So since you already know your total pressure, so you just plug in this inside here. Therefore, to answer the question, what is the partial pressure? of oxygen is equivalent to this value times this value. So 2.7907 times 10 to the power of negative 1, you need to times your total pressure which is 7.7101 times 10 to the power of negative 2. Therefore, you should get your partial pressure equivalent to 2.1516 10 to the power of negative 2 atm. So this is the final answer for the third question. Question number 4. Chlorine gas is in a 5 liter container at 25 degrees Celsius and 2 atm. A certain amount of hydrogen with a partial pressure of 0.5 atm is added to the container. What is the mole fraction of 
hydrogen. In this question, there are two gases involved, which are chlorine and also hydrogen. Their partial pressure are 2 atm and also 0 0.5 atm. So from here, we can get the total pressure, which is 2 atm plus 0 0.5 atm. So you should get the total pressure equivalent to 2.5 atm. So then we can use the ratio between the um, ideal gas law of these two gases. So PV equivalent to MRT for the total gas divided by PV equivalent to NRT for hydrogen gas, so you will get the number of mole. So since there's no changes in the temperature and the value of gas constant are the same, and also the container are the same container, so we are going to slash this out. So we are going to plug in the value for the total gas. So the partial pressure is equivalent to 2.5 and the partial pressure for your hydrogen is equivalent to 0 0.5 so equivalent to and total gas divided by n hydrogen whereby n is the number of mole so 2.5 mole of hydrogen is equivalent to 0 0.5 mole of total gas. If I were to calculate one mole of hydrogen, it should be equivalent to 0 0.5 divided by 2.5 mole of total gas. Right? Therefore, you should get 0 0.2 mole of total gas. So this is the mole fraction of hydrogen. In order for you to check whether or not your answers are correct, so what we are going to do is we are going to calculate what is the partial pressure. So partial pressure is equivalent to mole fraction times total pressure. So the mole fraction is this one, 0 0.2, and your total pressure is 2.5. Therefore, you will get your partial pressure equivalent to 0 0.5. So these two matches the one given to you in the question. So this proof that the mole fraction for hydrogen is indeed 0 0.2 mole. Question number 5. Consider the reaction below. The reaction mixture initially contains 2.24 atm of xenon and 4.27 atm of fluorine. If the equilibrium pressure of xenon is 0.34, determine the equilibrium constant of the reaction. In this question, you were given a balance equation already. So you have xenon reacted with fluorine to produce XeF4. Right? So from here, you need to do your ice diagram. So initial change equilibrium. Initially, it contains 2.24 atm of xenon and 4.27 atm of fluorine, whereby there's no product being formed just yet. So in change, it's going to be negative x. This one going to be negative 2x because you have 2 around here. And then this one will be positive x. So at equilibrium, it's going to be 2.24 minus x, 4.27 minus 2x, and x. 
Right. If you look at the question again, so it states here that at equilibrium, the pressure of Xe is 0 0.34. So from this statement, we know that Z0 at equilibrium is equivalent to 0 0.34. Therefore, 2.24 minus X equivalent to 0 0.34. So, x is equivalent to 0 0.34 minus 2.24. Therefore, you should get your x should be equivalent to 1.9. So, this value implies for all. So, we are going to substitute all of the x's with 1.9. All right, so since the this one is just x and we already know this value, so we are just going to deal with the F2. So the partial pressure for F2 is equivalent to 4.27 minus 2x. So 4.27 minus 2 and we are going to substitute the x with 1.9. Therefore, you should get the partial pressure for F2 is equivalent to 4.7 times 10 to the power of negative 1. So since we already know all the values for these gases at equilibrium, so it's easy for us to calculate what is the equilibrium constant for this reaction. Alright, so moving on, now we are going to calculate the equilibrium constant, so Kp is equivalent to the partial pressure for the product, which is XEF, divided by the partial pressure of the reactant, so now all we have to do is just plug in this value, so 1.9 divided by 0 0.34 times 4.7 times 10 to the power of negative 1. So you need to do square here because you have 2 here. So you should get the final answer for this question equivalent to 2.5297 times 10 to the power of 1. So this is your Kp which is the equilibrium constant. Question number 6. 6 mole of nitrogen gas and 20 mole of hydrogen were allowed to react at 650 Kelvin and 50 atm of pressure. At equilibrium, 4 mole of nitrogen gas had been converted into ammonia. Determine the Kp of this reaction. In order for you to answer this question, the first thing that you need to do is you need to be able to write a balance equation for this reaction. So basically, nitrogen shall react with hydrogen to produce ammonia, which is given in the question. So from here, you need to be able to balance out this equation. So basically, you have three hydrogen here and two hydrogen here. The easiest way for you to balance out this equation is just putting two here and three over here. And then you need to check on your nitrogen. So at the reactant, you do have two nitrogen and indeed in the product, you have two nitrogen as well. So we consider this as a balanced equation for this reaction. So next, what we are going to do is we are going to write the ice diagram. So I, C, E, initial change and also equilibrium. Initially, you have 6 mole of nitrogen and you have 20 mole of hydrogen whereby you don't have any ammonia. So in change, you need to have negative x. This one is negative 3x and this one is 2x. So at equilibrium, you have 6 minus x, 20 minus 3x and 2x. All right. 
So when you read again, the question it states here that four mole of nitrogen had been converted into ammonia. Therefore, what we can say now is the value of x is actually equivalent to four. So what we are going to do now is we are going to convert all of these x's into four, and then we will get the new value of e. So six minus four. 20 minus 3 times 4 and also 2 times 4. So you shall get the new value for the uh, gases at equilibrium is equivalent to 2 more, 8 more and also 8 more. By looking at the question, you were asked to calculate the Kp. It means that your ice diagram should not be in mole, instead it should be in uh, partial pressure. So what we are going to do now is we are going to calculate what is the partial pressure for each gases that take place in this reaction. So now what we need to do is we need to calculate the mole fraction of each and every gas that is available in this reaction. So we are going to start with um, nitrogen. So nitrogen, so the mole fraction shall be the number of mole for nitrogen, which is two mole, divided by the total number of mole of uh, gases. So you have two mole plus eight mole plus eight mole. So it means that for nitrogen, it's going to be 2 over 18. Therefore, the mole fraction for nitrogen is equivalent to 0 0.1111. Alright, so um, we are going to move forward to hydrogen. So for hydrogen, the number of mole is 8. And then the total number of mole is 18. So you will get the mole fraction of 0.4444 which is identical with the NH3 same goes 8 divided by 18 so you will get the same value all right so from this value how are you going to find the partial pressure so mole traction times the total pressure is equivalent to partial pressure. Alright, so what is your total pressure? If you look at the question here, it allowed to react at 650 Kelvin and 50 ATM pressure. So this is our total pressure. So all of this value we are going to times with 50 to get the partial pressure for these gases. So, what you're going to get is the partial pressure for the nitrogen, hydrogen and also ammonia is the multiplication of this value. So once you have calculated this, you will get the partial pressure for nitrogen is equivalent to 5 point five 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 zero ATM and the partial pressure of hydrogen and also ammonia are the same which is twenty two point two two zero zero ATM right so you now have the partial pressure of all the gases so it's going to be easy for you to calculate what is the KP for this reaction so the Kp for this reaction is partial pressure of NH3 to the power of 2 divided by the partial pressure of N2 times the partial pressure of hydrogen to the power of 3. So what you're going to do is you're going to plug in all the values so the partial pressure for NH3 is 22.2200 so this one you need to do to the power of 2 
and the partial pressure for N2 is 5.5550 and then this one the hydrogen have the same partial pressure with ammonia is going to be 22.2200 to the power of 3 so you should get equivalent to 4.9373 times 10 to the power of 2 divided by 6.0941 times 10 to the power of 4 therefore your Kp should be equivalent to 8.1016 times 10 to the power of negative 3 so this is your final answer for the sixth question Question number 7. The dissociation of iodine monobromide shall produce iodine and bromine gas. Given that the initial pressure of the iodine monobromide and the Kp of the dissociation reaction is equivalent to 0 0.017 atm and 8.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 respectively, determine the partial pressure of iodine monobromide at equilibrium. In order for us to tackle this question, the first thing that we need to do is we need to write the balance equation for the dissociation process. So you are going to dissociate iodine monobromide to become iodine and also bromine gas. So from here, you need to balance out this equation by putting 2 at the reactant. Next up, what we are going to do is we are going to write the I diagram for this reaction. So, initial, change, and equilibrium. At the beginning of the dissociation process, the initial pressure of iodine monobromide is equivalent to 0 0.017, whereby there's no dissociation occurring at the beginning. So, this one should be 0 and 0. So in change, you will have negative 2x, this one is positive x, and this one is positive x, making the equilibrium as 0 0.017 minus 2x, x, and x. Therefore, from here, we can write the Kp for the reaction, which is the reverse reaction, so pressure of bromine times partial pressure of iodine divided by partial pressure of iodine monobromide to the power of 2. So from here, what we are going to do is we are going to just plug in the value. So from your ice diagram, we are going to do x times x divided by 0 0.017 minus 2x to the power of 2. Looking at the question, you have the value of your Kp which is 8.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So what we are going to do is we are going to copy this again. 8.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 is equivalent to x squared divided by 0 0.017 minus 2x squared. So from here, we are going to do the... Uh, square root of 8.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 so that we can just have x divided by 0 0.017 minus 2x. So now you're just going to um, press your calculator and you should get the square root uh, value is equivalent to 9.2195 times 10 to the power of negative 2 should be equivalent to x divided by 0 0.017 minus 2x. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring this whole thing up here and then you do the simple quadratic, you should get your x should be equivalent to 1.5673 times 10 to the power of negative 3 divided by 1.1844. So now when you have calculated it, you should get your x equivalent to 1.3233 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Alright, so now we need to check again what the question wants. 
it asks you to determine the partial pressure of iodine monobromide at equilibrium. So this value that you need to calculate. So at equilibrium, supposedly the partial pressure for iodine monobromide is equivalent to 0 0.0. 017 minus 2x therefore you just substitute the x with the value that we have calculated just now 1.3233 times 10 to the power of negative 3 you should get 0 0.017 minus 2.6466 times 10 to the power of negative 3 and therefore you should get 1.4353 times 10 to the power of negative 2 ATM as your final answer which is the partial pressure of iodine monobromide at equilibrium. Moving on to question number 8. An ideal gas has a volume of 10 litre at 20 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 750 mmHg. Determine the volume of the same gas at STP. By looking at the question, we know that we have information on the volume, temperature and also pressure. Unfortunately, the unit is not correct still. So we are going to convert the unit for the temperature and also pressure beforehand. So I'm just going to tackle the pressure because uh, conversion from degree Celsius to Kelvin is simple enough. So you have 750 millimeter mercury to be converted into ATM. So what you need to do is just divide this value with 760. Therefore, you should get 9.8684 times 10 to the power of negative 1. ATM. So from here, what you're going to do is you're going to use the ideal gas law to find the number of moles. So PV equivalent to NRT. So your pressure is 9.8684 times 10 to the power of negative 1. And your volume is given in the question 10 liter equivalent to N, the thing we want to calculate. And R, the constant unit, 0 0.0821, and your temperature, 20 degrees Celsius, to be converted to Kelvin plus 273. So from here, you should get your N equivalent to 9.8684 divided by 2.4055 times 10 to the power of 1. And therefore, you should get your N equivalent to 4.1024 times 10 to the power of 1. Alright, let's check on the question again. You were asked to determine the volume of the same amount of gas at STP. So since we already know the number of moles, so we can plug in this value because at STP, the standard uh, temperature pressure, so your temperature is 273 and your pressure is equivalent to 180 m. To plug in the value inside the ideal gas law, PV equivalent to NRT formula, so your pressure at STP is equivalent to 1. The volume is the thing that you want to calculate now and the N is the one that you have just calculated 4.1024 times 10 to the power of 1 and your R is a constant value 0 0.0821 and your temperature at STP is 273. So you will get your V is actually equivalent to 9.1948 times 10 to the power of 2. So this one should be in liter. This is the final answer for your 8 question. Let's move on to the last question for this week. After a mixture of hydrogen and nitrogen gases in a reaction vessel is allowed to attain equilibrium at 472 degrees Celsius, it was found to contain 7.388 atm of hydrogen, 
2.46 atm of nitrogen and 0.166 atm of ammonia from these data calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction so we are going to do the same drill before you can calculate the kp you need to be able to write a balanced equation for this reaction so this reaction consists of hydrogen and also nitrogen gas which will eventually form ammonia, so NH3. So what you're going to do is you need to check the number of hydrogen. Here you have three and here you have two. The easiest way is to just swap the number around. So you put three over here and two over here. So the H is balanced and then you look at your N. So now you have two N at the product and you did have to end at the reactant so this is a balanced equation for this reaction so next up we are going to write the kp for this reaction so kp for a reaction is the reverse reaction divided by the forward reaction so the partial pressure of nh3 to the power of 2 because you have 2 here divided by partial pressure of H2 to the power of 3 because of this 3 and partial pressure of N2 so given these values so you just have to plug it in so this one should be equivalent to 0 0.166 to the power of 2 divided by your hydrogen is 7.38 to the power of 3 and your nitrogen is 2.46 so you just have to press your calculator you should get 2.7556 times 10 to the power of negative 2 divided by 9.8879 times 10 to the power of 2 therefore your kp should be equivalent to 2.7868 times 10 to the power of negative 5 so this is the final answer for the final question this week all right everyone this is the end of this week's video do give me a thumbs up if you think that this video is beneficial for you and don't forget to subscribe so i'll see you again next week in the next video take care and stay safe goodbye